So then continuing the lineage theme, Dexter and I are going to talk to you about a new feature, lineage impact analysis. I'm really excited to talk about this feature at the town hall, especially because I know this has just been requested so much from folks in the community. Um, and I'm really happy to be able to finally present it. You know, we've incorporated a lot of that feedback and I feel like this is a really collaborative project between us and uh, you know, all sorts of folks in the community. So thank you. And uh, I'm excited to, excited to demo it. So what is a lineage impact analysis? So essentially what you can do now is for a data set, go and view a collection of all the downstreams of your data set together in, in one grouping. So not just that first layer, that we were showing you previously, but actually we'll go across all the layers and bring it together into a collection. And this collection you can view, but you can also filter it using all different types of filters that you can use in the search that you're used to. So you can filter by tags, platform, entity type. Now uh, with the recent update we gave, you can filter by owner. You can also have a free text search box to just do free search across all of the downstreams. And then uh, we added a new filter just for the impact analysis um, section, which is the level of dependency. So you can say, you know, I actually want to see only things that are two layers deep or three layers deep away from the current uh, entity that I'm looking at. Then finally, um, once you have that collection, you can, they're viewing it as one thing, but what are you going to do? What do you want to do with it? And so we've added the ability to download this collection that you filtered as a CSV. You can take it with you and then go do any other action based on that. So on the motivation front, I think about two different main use cases here. So there's the proactive side and the reactive side. On the reactive side, that's sort of the data ops use case. Maybe something's gone wrong um, with your data set and you need to know what do I do about it? Who do I alert? Who do I inform? How do I make this right? So you can go in and find who's depending on your data set. If it maybe your stream job is delayed or a data quality check's gone wrong or something like that, what, and, you know, how can you manage this incident? But there's also the proactive side, which is you, you want to make a change and you want to know before you go ahead, who do you have to discuss this change with, who might be impacted in a similar fashion? Um, and you know, how, who do you essentially want to reach out to and make sure that you're going to deprecate a data set or change a column or do a backfill or something like that, who do you need to talk to? And again, thanks to the community for you know, great conversations that helped us understand better how to build this feature and what exactly impact analysis, with, you know, what iteration of impact analysis would be useful to folks. And I want to give a special shout out to Stephen Poe. We had a lot of really fantastic conversations and he was super helpful in um, helping us clarify how we can make this most useful. Um, all right, so now I want to go into a live demo of this feature so you can see it in action. So I brought, made this raw events Kafka data set. And uh, you know, maybe this is some event stream that we have going on. And all of a sudden, I realized this event stream is delayed. And uh, I need to know what to do about it. So if I go into the lineage tab, by default, I just see there's one downstream consumer. And so on the surface level, it might seem like there isn't that much impact of this Kafka stream being delayed. But now I can jump into the impact analysis section of the lineage tab and see not just that first layer of lineage, but all the different layers beyond that. And so when I jump in, we'll do a little search across the graph. And actually I have to give a shout out to Ibu. This is Ibu's little animated GIF that uh, they contributed. Now is our loading indicator for the impact analysis section. And this, after I jump into that um, impact analysis view, I see all the different um, entities, all the different layers deep. So you can see here in the top right corner of the entity row is how far away the connection is from this source data set. So for example, dim users is a few steps away. And I can open this filter panel and say, you know, actually um, I need to go and let the analysts know. So I actually just wanna filter by looker and just find all these looker charts and dashboards that depend on this data set. Once I have this subset of my dependencies filtered down, I can go into this little menu and hit download, name my file. And then when I download it, it pops up as a CSV. Um, I can just show you after I open it, it's gonna have the, the urn, the name, 
the entity type description, you'll see ownership information, platform tags and terms if those are filled out, the level of the dependency, and then also a URL that will bring you uh, to the, the entity in question. So then just as one, this is the, the end of the demo, but as one final Easter egg, we thought this CSV, download CSV feature is super cool. And so uh, something that we did just for fun was add it to the search page. So if I search for raw events here, you'll see that same menu and I can download any group of search results as CSV. Um, this is also in all the different embedded search elements. So if I go to, for example, my ownership page, you can get downloaded CSV there and whatever filters you've applied are gonna be included here as well. So uh, really excited to hear your feedback on this download CSV universally. You know, let us know what you think. Uh, and also, of course, impact analysis as well. Um, yeah, that's the demo. Then I just wanted to touch on one thing before I cut over to Dexter. So just on the what's next. So Shoshanka was talking a little bit about how we're moving toward column level lineage and getting that metadata inside a data hub. And so once we have that, we're gonna, you'll be able to do, what you'll see coming down is the ability to say, you know, if I was gonna change this column, you know, what is the impact of that? And we'll be able to have impact analysis, not just at the entity level, but also the column levels. Column levels. So things like schema change management will be easier. And then obviously, you know, what, what's next is not just determined by what's on this slide, but it's also determined by you folks in the community. So please let us know, try it out. And I really look forward to reading your feedback. Now uh, I'll hand it over to Dexter and he can talk about the amazing uh, engineering architecture that went into this feature. Get, get before awesome. you switch over, uh, would you mind talking about the API really quickly? Oh yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, in addition to being able to view this through the UI, we also have an API that you can hit to query and get this information. And in the API, it's not just those columns that you see in the CSV, but you can fetch any metadata about these entities. So you can programmatically say, you know, I want to get all the downstreams across all levels for this data set and just give me, you know, you can provide filters and search queries just like you can in the UI. So essentially everything you see here in the UI, you're able to express, express through our GraphQL API. Um, and we'll share out documentation on that afterwards. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right, so let, let me go really quickly through how the backend works. So, um, so in order to do this, we have to change uh, some fundamentals of how lineage works in the backend. Um, basically, uh, let me go over how it was working before. Um, so uh, after no code change that we did last year, um, we were able to put relationship annotations on our models to note that the, this field called dataset in an upstream lineage aspect means it's a downstream of lineage between these entity types. And these relationship annotations are converted into edges in the graph index. So these are some example edges that you can see here. For example, a logging event is a downstream of sample hype data set, uh, data job user creation consumes this data set and so on and so forth. So how this edge is provided is the, the entity on the left side uh, is the source urn of the entity um, and the entity on the right side are the values inside the aspects. So what is the source urn, what is the value in the aspect decides the direction of the edge in the graph index. Now the problem is that this is not necessarily the direction of the edge in the lineage graph. So if you see above, we go from data set to data set and then data set to um, data job and so on in the lineage graph on the top right, but the direction of the edges are sometimes the opposite. So you can see that the logging event is downstream of sample hype data set, but the direction of the edge in the lineage graph is, is the opposite. While if you see the very bottom, data job user deletions creates this da data, uh, or sorry, that's a, that's a typo. It produces this data set, and that is the same as the lineage direction um, on the graph above. So what we had to do before was for front end to whitelist a bunch of these edges and figure out how to query for on our graph service. So our graph service has no knowledge about how lineage works. Um, and it just has knowledge about these edges. And now the problem with multi-hop when we tried to hop multiple times is that we need to know what a lineage edge is on the back end. So we had uh, our initial set of iterations. If you go to the next slides, um, Gabe, next slide. Um, 
to build this lineage registry where uh, it's all no code for given a relationship annotations, we add a few fields called uh, is lineage is true means it will show up in the lineage graph. And this is an actual lineage edge um, and some other metadata about this relationship so that we can build a lineage registry that says, given an entity type, what are the upstream data sets? How do we query for them in the graph database? And what are the downstream uh, edges and how do we query for them in the graph database? So for example, um, if you see this data job lineage registry, it says that to get the upstream entities of this data job, um, you need to look for these type of edges in the graph database. One is consumes. So basically I wanted to see what this data job consumes, which is actually the upstream of this data job, as well as the downstream of. So what is this uh, data job downstream of? which means that the, what this data job is downstream of are upstreams of this data job, right? It's, it's a little confusing, but bear with me here. Um, and, um, and then the same thing for downstream. So like here are the edges to look for in the graph in database to find the downstreams. Now, uh, the contract between the front end and back end is now much simpler. The front end tells us, give me all the upstreams and downstream lineages um, without knowing anything about edge types, anything about anything like that. Um, the lineage registry in the back end decides, oh, these are the edges we need to fetch on the graph, uh, graph index and fetches those special edges. Um, so now, um, so as a side effect, our lineage graph has also improved uh, by saying all of these, all the entities that shows up in the lineage graph and the edges that show up in the lineage graph are defined on the back end now uh, through these relationship, ed, uh, relationship annotations. Now, now that this is set up, we can move on to how multi-hop works. So basically, now that we can do a single hop, if you go to the next one, Gabe. Um, now that we can do a single hop, we can easily do a multi-hop. Um, we started uh, work on Elasticsearch because Elasticsearch is the mainly used uh, GraphDB right now. Um, and we'll be implementing this in Neo4j soon. Um, in Elasticsearch, there's no way to go multiple hops easily because it's not a graph database. Um, so basically, we had to do a simple BFS across the graph index. So given an entity, uh, given the set of entities from the last hop, fetch all the downstream edges. So do one hop to the next set of edges and then go, uh, go uh, keep track of all the visited nodes and do all the hops until we reach the leaf nodes. Um, we batch all the requests to minimize number of queries. So we don't do it per entity, we do it per hop. So per hop this one request to Elasticsearch. Um, and then we cache the final set of urns, all the urns that were impacted by this uh, data set. Um, now, once we have the final set of urns, we query the search request. So we do search across entities the same way we do the search on the main search page, but with this added urn filter saying, anything returned by the search needs to be among these urns that are impacted by the data set. Um, by doing so, we're able to support that embedded search experience that you saw in the demo. Um, so now, like once we have the Neo4j implementation of that, uh, the, the first part, um, we'll have this working on Neo4j as well. Um, if you have any questions on this, uh, please uh, ping either Gabe or me. Um, we're open to any suggestions.